Hi everyone, Jess and Al from thesitecollective.com. We wrote a book and we are going to do a couple of clips today to give you a bit of an overview of what it is that we've got in our new ebook focused on the depression solution. So today we're going to talk about the association between serotonin and sensitivity. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, because look, it's our contention that depression is not a chemical imbalance. All right. It's more like an emotional imbalance and that has various causes. And one of the way it manifests is through sensitivity. It's major. So we're going to get into that now. Here we go. Here's the book. Here's the book. This is what you need to look for on the website. Yeah. Ebook. Probably make a hard copy at some point too. I hope. Before we start talking about sensitivity, we need to talk about the idea of neuroticism. So neuroticism is a component of temperament. It talks about the degree to which someone experiences emotional sensitivity. It's on a sliding scale, but it's also genetically predetermined, right? People are born at a set point on this continuum and that will influence how intensely they experience their emotions throughout the course of their life. You can see this in babies. There's some kids who are just really easy to settle, really chill. They kind of sit down this end of the spectrum. There are other babies going into toddlerhood that just seem to be really sensitive, have more meltdowns, might have some uh, sensory sensitivity in terms of tags on their clothes or textures of foods or things like that. They tend to operate a little bit higher up here on, this, on the neuroticism scale. Now, you and I have got variations. I sit higher on this scale than you do. The thing with this to remember is that you can't necessarily change your temperament because it is genetically predetermined. You need skills to be able to moderate the expression of the neuroticism, which is expressed as day-to-day -day sensitivity. Yeah, that's right. We're going to get it, we're getting into that, but so you can have a good day and you can have a bad day and your sensitivity can vary because of all kinds of factors. So there is neuroticism kind of indicates where do you kind of sit in terms of what we refer to as your window of tolerance. Sensitivity is then the day-to-day -day fluctuations as to how sensitive you feel in any given day. So for those of us who ex exist at the higher end of the spectrum, our window is probably gonna look like this. On a good day, I'm probably only getting down to about here. I, I get down here very, very rarely, but me kind of operating even on a good day, this is where I am but on a higher day, I come more up towards this um, end of the spectrum in terms of if I haven't slept, if I'm feeling unwell, if my pain is bad this day, if the kids are driving me nuts or whatever. So I sit more up this end. You go that end a little bit more. Yeah, look, I mean, if I'm, if I'm killing it, everything's working well and you know, I'm scoring lots of goals and I'm very happy, well then my sensitivity is gonna be pretty low. On a bad day, it's, now we've sort of capped it out here at seven, but you know, believe it or not, on a really bad day, I could get to 10, same as the best of them. But, but it takes quite a bit to get me there, whereas I would presuppose that it probably takes a bit less to get you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I start at a lower baseline. Here's the relationship between kind of what low sensitivity looks like and some of the things that help us to experience a low state of sensitivity. Having a sense of order, routine, predictability, being emotionally recharged, getting good sleep. These are all the things that help us stay at the lower end of our sensitivity. These are the things that would increase our sensitivity. Chaos, tension, stress, you're emotionally fatigued, hunger, hangry, it's real, right? Malnutrition, PMS, sugar crashes, all of these sort of things will push you up to the higher end. But there is an association relationship between sensitivity and serotonin. There is, so there it is. That's what the serotonin molecule looks like. We make it from tryptophan, which you get from various sources, especially from meat. So if you're a vegan, you've got to make sure you're supplementing. Vegans are more commonly affected by depression and sensitivity. So when things are going well, when you're succeeding, there's not a lot of negative emotion going on in your life. So yay, okay? What that means is your serotonin is appropriately at the kind of higher end of your natural range. So you're not very sensitive. So all good and you can experience lots of positive emotion if things work out. So that's what we like. Alrighty. Now the situation where there's some kind of challenge, okay? There's some, something's gone wrong, okay? We need to solve something. So there's the challenge. It gives us a bit of negative emotion. It's like, oh, why isn't things working out the way I want? Drops our serotonin a little bit. So now we've got sort of a more of a moderate level of serotonin, which makes us a little bit more sensitive. So we're sensitive, we've got some negative emotion, and that primes us to do something about it. So hopefully we go ahead and solve the problem. And if we solve the problem, we go back to the previous side where we've got success. If we, we go yeah. there. If we don't solve the problem, then we go to here. Yeah, so we're feeling defeated. Now, this stacks up, this stacks up. The more, the more negative emotional experience that you accumulate, you know, within, especially within a stretch of time, less positive emotion. There we go, lots and lots of negative emotion. Our serotonin level is quite low now. 
and our sensitivity is up. And what that means is things are really on our radar. So stuff that mightn't have bothered us all that much is now like, ah, which means more and more negative emotion. And that doesn't leave a lot of space to have positive emotion. We're not doing well. Yeah. We're not doing well. Okay, now that's the sort of common thing, that's a common state that we see in depression. Yeah, yeah, I think this is kind of the starting point. And if we get more and more rounds of this, then it goes deeper and deeper into yeah. anodonia. Yeah. Here we go. So now, now we're not really enjoying very much at all. The stacks of negative emotion, serotonin's really low, very, very sensitive. And what that means is everything's been pushing our buttons and we're very emotionally fatigued. When you're extremely emotionally fatigued, it's hard for you to experience any joy. Mm hence the anhedonia. So, so this is a nasty kind of cycle, right? And we've got another video on anhedonia if you want to learn more about this specifically. Oh yeah, we do, mm. yeah, okay. All right, so what do the pills do, right? Because the pills aren't the solution to why you got sad, so let's have a think about what they actually do. Okay, so here we are in that defeated state. So things are not going well, we're not winning, all right? We take ourselves some, serot um, some antidepressants, mostly what they do is punch up serotonin. So here's our high serotonin state, contrived, right? Like it's an artificial serotonin state. So our sensitivity actually comes down. So we experience less negative emotion and maybe even some scope for positive emotion. But that doesn't mean that the meds give you positive emotion. So this is where I have an issue with the term mm. antidepressant because they don't make you less depressed, they make you less sensitive. This is where they're actually operating. They operate more here but it doesn't create positive emotion. It creates an opportunity for you to go and do something to experience positive emotion. Yeah, I agree. So uh, a better way to think about antidepressants than at least the serotonin ones is their emotional armor or emotional desensitizers. Mm. I think that's a more accurate way to think about it. All right, so anyways, over time, what happens? Okay, so we've had our antidepressant response now, so we're not looking quite so defeated. We're still in this contrived state um, now our sensitivities had an opportunity to, to get even lower, so less negative emotion, and maybe more capacity for positive emotion, but you can get a bit numbed, okay? The desensitivity can also work for the positive too, so everything can get a bit meh. So a common, a common thing that people describe is just, just feeling numb, or sometimes they talk about feeling zombified. Well, that's not a side effect, it's kind of what they do, it just might mean the dose is too high. Um, a common thing that happens is, Oh, I'm better, but you know, I'm not that much better. Okay, let's chase the dose. Let's increase the dose. Let's increase the dose. The more the dose goes up, often the capacity for positive emotion seems to be affected. So it's sort of backfires. Yeah. So that's just a small clip from what we've got an extract out of the book. We're going to have come with, keep coming through with some more videos explaining some different components of it. But to get the full thing, you'll find it on the website, thesitecollective.com. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon.